Good to see you. Thank you very much. Very nice to see you. Thank you very much for being here. You, you always you. come on a, uh, a festive evening, don't you? Well, uh, it seems that uh, I do. And usually an animal in, in, in attendance, as there is tonight. Yeah. There's always a poodle in the halls of NBC <laughs> during the Letterman show, walking on its hind legs with wearing jeans. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm very excited about the anniversary. I'm happy for the success of the show. So my mother always taught me to bring something. <laughs> Yeah, that's very thoughtful. And there's a couple of hamatash, and you could always use milk. You know, you never... <laughs> <laughs> you may run out, well, you know? Well, that's very nice. A quart of milk. Because a lot of people don't like cream with their coffee. No, that's great. Can we open yeah. this or just this... save it? No, we'll save it. All right, you know, I'll because... put it over here. That's so nice. nice. There's a prune danish in there. It gets caught in your teeth, and you have to search for it. This is interesting. The pressure is, is kind of on James Brown to come up with something, though, isn't there? In the, in the way of a gift. Uh, the last, the last he may not be bringing something from the bakery. We're different <laughs> traditions, you know. Uh, <laughs> he will bring his talents. He's a lovely man, yeah. too. Uh, and he still has a voice, actually, yeah. after that. You know, you do that for a living. You, you talk like Andy Devine quicker than you can say Jack Robinson. It's uh, very exciting. Uh, the last time you were here, Robert, you were a little depressed. Remember that? This I was. was uh, I actually shot. I saw the tape later. I was a little depressed. And you want to tell the folks why? Well, well, I was talking about my wife was going away for four months to Europe to sing in the opera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to Paris a couple of times and saw... I mean, there's no toilet paper backstage at the Paris Opera. Can you possibly believe that? I saw these huge $5,000 a night international stars walking around with toilet paper under their arm. I said, this is the chintziest. I mean, I have a couple of holiday in towels I'd like to give back as soon as, as, soon as there's an amnesty, you know, but I mean, from, from my early days. But stealing toilet paper, I found, no, they're bringing toilet paper because there is none. Oh, I see. They it's a company policy. Why I brought that up first, I think it, it symbolizes the disadvantages of American artists abroad. In any case, I was left alone. Brenda came home for a very brief moment before going on to San Diego to do Henry VIII. And one of the disadvantages when you're away from your spouse of 10 years for a long time, so I went to go to sleep. She went to sleep first. She was exhausted coming from Europe. I went into my own bed. She went, ah, ah, concierge, poliziano. <laughs> she wasn't used to anyone else yeah. in the bedroom. Well, yeah, that's, well, I guess, a good sign, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> Very good sign, but uh, it is one of the disadvantages. I stayed up a little while longer, and... I didn't, even though she was sleeping, I said, coming in, husband, <laughs> making an appearance. How do, you, uh, how do you get along uh, in uh, metropolitan Paris? You're pretty well versed in uh, transportation, public transportation, no, subways, cabs, so it's forth? It's very tough. Uh, got lost in the metro and the, the subway, you know. And I was begging for a nice Frenchman who might remember D-Day and help a couple of Yanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, I heard a blues singer. Uh, I couldn't find anyone that spoke English. We were totally lost in the belly of Paris there. And I heard, got my blue on my shoulder, no I was You know, blind Levin Jefferson. I run over, and it's a young guy. Uh, and he's playing. I put a buck in his, uh, or a few francs in his case there. I said, can you tell us where to go? He goes, okay. He's a Frenchman. You know, he, he memorized all the blues stuff by, uh, by rote. He, he didn't know how to go. No, I mean, all kinds of... Uh, things about being involved abroad when you are reduced to a child really money becomes something you don't know you have to take time to memorize medium-sized queen's head a large <laughs> castle you know <laughs> and uh, paid fifteen dollars for a bar of soap is that, that's where the cab ride in from the airport uh, is some like 160 whatever the currency is would be that's francs and you're busily uh, checking to see if you can cover that well thing. I had a nice man in Paris took me the uh, from the Charles de Gaulle airport to uh, the central city by way of Ogden, Utah. <laughs> you know, he's a nice guy. How many times have you been here on this uh, extravaganza in the past? Uh... I think my appearances this year were four. You know, you think about your anniversary. This is my fifth, in other words. Mm -hmm. How many children were conceived during the David Letterman show in the past? <laughs> well, in the studio audience alone, I know uh, probably a couple of dozen at least happened. Um, I know. How many people are scratching themselves, brushing their teeth? How many people had, I had arguments? How many people knew the marriage was over during the David Letterman Ooh. show? You know, or knew good things. My television in, in the house when I was a kid was always on in the evening hours. And I remember certain emotional uh, traumas by, by what was on. 
My parents had this terrible fight when I was 11, and they, they made an appearance on the show, too. That's right. They just yeah, had their Robert 50th Stoke anniversary. Yeah. Uh, I thought, uh-oh, it's over. They had a terrible fight. And I remember I've Got a Secret was on. <laughs> and the woman's secret was she had 21 children. And afterwards, they gave her a washer. <laughs> <laughs> but how many... You know what else I missed? You weren't at the Super Bowl on the sidelines there. All the NBC stars were there. That's I right. All the NBC stars were there. <laughs> That's right. David, I was furious at it. After a nice, uh, dignified Xerox commercial that cost $5 billion mm -hmm. and, and Xerox, whatever, and you go, the AP wants you! We don't want no stupid back, you know! And it's like... <laughs> Uh, and, and uh, you know, I mean, it's a good image for America, too. I think a combination of he and Richard Simmons is just what you want your children to grow up with. <laughs> there ought to be a police team, possibly. But we have some highlights from the year, don't we? Well, take a look at the screen there. Robert, tell us about oh, your dog. One. There's Moisha, my dog in the back there. This is your very first one, right? And I wore my overcoat. And then Moisha couldn't come, so I brought a leash with no dog in it. Uh -huh. And the joke worked better this time yeah, than then. It did, didn't it, somehow? <laughs> Then there was my bathrobe. You see, I live so close by, as you know. That's right. That I came in my bathrobe. This was the night of the, uh, the marching band. And I brought, and, and I usually have milk and cookies before I go to sleep. You gave me milk and cookies. They were Lorna Dunes, however. Uh -huh. And they got caught. I had a search for the Lord, you know. I spent, well, this is well, I always was dignified. One thing I was on the show was dignified. That's right. You know, I never made faces or anything special. I don't know why these were selected, but they're out of context. <laughs> there was a hygiene thing, Dr. Frank Field, e ear care, uh -huh, you know. That's right. Came on. There's one. I jumped. I bought a Toyota or something. I don't know. I jumped up. What's this now? I had to bring my own chair. Do you remember that night? That's right. Something happened. Our uh, chair uh, was... Well, there. the captain was on. That was my bar mitzvah picture, which right. we had on. The highlights of the bar mitzvah were the jello. Yep. A chopped liver a mold liver, with little, a, uh, the form know, of a chicken. Sparrows, and the herring ferris wheel, my friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You remember that one? That was the highlight of the year. And smoking a cigar and then ran away from my father. That was the dots at the end of my home movies. And most of them were dots, you know. Uh, that was I was talking about ants and how they paint yeah, your face. You you're always touching your face, aren't you? Oh, a band cam. That's right, the marching band. Do you band remember that time? In. We were in yeah. the middle of talking. Yeah, yeah. And they surprised David and myself by having a marching band come through. And the joke worked not too well. But it was taking a chance. That's right. And we, we have... You know, uh, one thing I must say, the David Letterman show takes a chance. Yeah. Smack them right in the face. He had hit me, and then I this smacked is David this, oh, right this is, Oh, there we are. Yeah. We're actually live. Yeah. We certainly do... Uh, no, but I had a... You know I had a wonderful time, and you're a real... Uh, you know how to do this extremely well, and I try to help you as much as I can. You're always welcome to help. In and fact, that's... that goes for anyone in America who thinks they can help. Just stop on by. You're going to be uh, going to San Jose and then uh, uh, other interesting uh, venues? Uh, lots of colleges, and I'll be around. Well, I appreciate your... I'm going to go to the, uh, uh, the uh, party now. Oh, yeah. I was always hoping to leave early, like Bob Hope, you know? But I have to wait till I'm older. You know? Okay. Uh, please stick around for the party, and thank you for all your help over the past year. Mr. Robert Klein, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Klein.